Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Maple, Ontario. It is May. It's May the 1st, 2022. And it's uh, spring is starting. Certainly yesterday was nice. Today it's getting a little overcast, but those showers will bring those May flowers. So welcome again to you all. We are going to be celebrating the sacrament of the Holy Communion today. So if you're at home, uh, get your elements prepared as you follow along with um, uh, with Holy Communion. Now let me introduce uh, Reverend Kathy Brownlee, who will be leading us in today's worship. Good morning, and it's a pleasure to be with you this morning on this first Sunday of May, this first day of May. I think it's called May Day today. I welcome those who are here in person this morning and also those who are uh, with us through by, uh, by means of live stream and those participating through YouTube this morning. I invite you this morning to join with me as we celebrate Holy Communion. Our call to worship is a responsive call to worship and the words will be printed, the response will be printed on the screen. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with joy. Come before him with happy songs. For the Lord is good, his love is eternal, and his faithfulness lasts forever. Hallelujah. Our opening praise hymn today is number 260 in the Blue Book of Praise. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Please stand if you're able. Oh, 
We are in the season of Easter in the church year, and this is the third Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. Loving God, with gladness and with songs of praise, we gather to worship you today. We thank you for the loveliness of the month of May, for all the signs of new life around us, for blossoms and flowers and seeds. Oh God, you have reached out to us in countless ways. You have spoken your truth to us. Sometimes we have sought you in all the wrong places. Sometimes we have been preoccupied and not heard your call. Speak to us this day as we come together in the name of the risen Christ. Speak to us a word that will affirm, a word that will uplift, a word that will empower. Reveal yourself to us in your risen power as we worship and praise you through our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the good news the good news of the gospel. Jesus is risen. In Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God for his mercy and for his grace. Let us share with one another the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ on this Communion Sunday. We will share the peace as we wave to one another, uh, sharing the peace of Christ. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Good morning to St. Andrew's youth. This is, uh, this is the first day of May, and I'm sure you're seeing the approach of the end of school with now being at the first day of May. I hope that all of you have been well. Today, we're coming to the Lord's table. And as we come to the Lord's table, there are certain thoughts that we have as we come to the Lord's table. As we come to the Lord's table, we give thanks. We give thanks for God's gift to us of Jesus. Jesus who lived among us, who shared our life, who Lived, uh, lived among us and who shared all our pain and sorrow, we give thanks as we come to the Lord's table as we share in this meal. As we come to the Lord's table, we also remember, we remember that God gave us his son, Jesus Christ, and that Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. We remember that Jesus gathered with his disciples on the night before, on the night of his betrayal, on the night before he went to the cross. We remember that Jesus took the Passover meal and gave it a new meaning. We remember that Jesus died on the cross. We also remember that on Easter, Jesus rose again, giving us, those who believe, eternal, the gift of eternal life. 
coming to the table is also a fellowship, a communion, as we gather and as we eat bread and drink grape juice together, we remember the great fellowship that we have with our brothers and sisters in Christ here in St. Andrews and our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world and our communion fellowship with God as we come to the table. Jesus is the host and we are his guests. We come giving thanks, we come remembering, and we come knowing the fellowship of each other and fellowship with God. Let's pray together. I'll say the words and I'll invite you to say the words after me. Let us pray. Dear God, dear God, thank you for this special meal. Thank you, thank you for, for this special, special meal. meal. Thank you for Jesus. Thank, thank you, you for, for Jesus. Jesus. We ask, we ask that you keep that you keep members of St. Mark's youth, members of St. Andrew's youth. youth safe and well safe, safe and, and well. well in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray amen amen that was a slip i'm sorry we, we want saint mark's <laughs> youth to be well too <laughs> after almost 20 years in the same congregation it <laughs> takes a while to take its leave St. Andrew's youth, keep well and keep safe. Let me uh, bring up uh, Fabrizio uh, Piazza to do this morning's scripture reading. Morning, everyone. Let us pray. Loving God, attend to us as we open your word. May our hearts and spirits listen for your will for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First scripture reading is from the book of Revelations, chapter 5, verses 11 to 14. New International Version. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is them saying to him, to whom, to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshiped. The second scripture reading is from the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. After Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee, it happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, and sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go out with you. So they went out and got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not recognize that it was Jesus. He, cut, he called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in, in because of, of the large number of fish. Then the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. 
Jesus said to them, bring some, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, your word is our mirror. We look into your word and we see our we see ourselves and our calling more clearly. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. In our reading this morning from John's Gospel, the Gospel writer John gives us a very vivid description of Jesus' third appearance to his disciples after his resurrection. This third appearance that Jesus makes, the risen Lord makes to his disciples, is different from the other two appearances that he's already made to them. For one thing, Jesus' other two appearances to his disciples took place in Jerusalem. There, when the disciples were gathered together in a room with the doors barred and locked for fear of being arrested, Jesus comes and appears to them on Easter evening. Then again, one week later, Jesus comes to them in the same room and appears to them a second time. You remember the second time that Jesus appears to his disciples, the disciple Thomas is present with them and Thomas makes his confession of faith, my Lord and my God. Yet, after all that the disciples have heard, all that they have seen themselves, in this morning's gospel reading, we hear them, seven of them, are going out fishing. They're going back to their occupation of fishing. If after the, after the events of Good Friday, the disciples had decided to go back to their fishing boats, to go back to doing what they had been doing, to uh, go back and pick up the pieces and go back to the life that they had known, then we could understand. But this, what John, the gospel writer John is describing, this does not happen between Good Friday and Easter. What's being described here is something that happens after Easter, after the disciples have seen for themselves the risen Christ 
at least two times. Yet, here they are going back to their former occupation as if nothing had happened. So Jesus finds seven of his disciples. He finds them out in a fishing boat near the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus stands there watching his seven disciples. When Jesus' disciples had set out the night before to go fishing, they had no idea, whatever, that they would meet Jesus on the shore of the sea in the morning. They were going back to work. They were going back to their occupation, which had been fishing. And here, they certainly did not expect to find Jesus. Jesus standing on the beach cooking breakfast. Just so, Jesus still comes to us, still comes to us in unexpected places and in unexpected ways. Do we expect to see Jesus in our place of work? Do we expect to see Jesus in our classroom? Do we expect to see Jesus walking in the mall? What would Jesus be doing there. The gospel writer John tells us, and there stood Jesus on the beach, and they did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus was aware that their fishing expedition had been unsuccessful. He was aware, he calls out to them about their catch and is aware that their nets are empty. Jesus gives them direction. He directs them to put their, cast their nets on the other side of the boat, on the right side of the boat. Those in the boat follow Jesus' direction. And very soon, they find that their net is full of fish. Jesus is risen. The risen Christ still meets us in the most unexpected places and in unexpected ways. As they sat down to have an ordinary breakfast of fish and bread, then the disciples knew that the risen Christ, Jesus, was their host. I am going fishing, Peter announced to the others. And they said, we will go with you. Here they are going back to doing what they had been doing as if nothing at all had happened. Until the risen Christ comes to them until the risen Christ calls to them and says to them, follow me. 
go into the world and share the gospel message. You cannot go back to your old ways. You must go forward. You must take on the new life that you have been prepared for. Each new day will bring these disciples joys, challenges, and struggles. The gospel writer John paints for us a beautiful picture, a picture in words of the risen Christ standing on the beach, standing there, directing his disciples to a new life. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. He has appeared to his disciples twice in Jerusalem and now on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus calls them out. He calls them out to recognize that he comes to them in the most unexpected places and in unexpected ways. Jesus still comes to us in unexpected places and in unexpected ways. Just like the disciples, when our cares and our disappointments and our failures are ready to overwhelm us, Jesus meets us and tells us to go forward in faith. Just when, like the disciples, we feel that our efforts are all in vain, Jesus meets us and calls us to calls us to look forward, to look forward and to go forward in a new direction. Jesus meets us on the beach. He meets us on life's beach. The living Christ meets us in the breaking of the bread. Wherever life is lived, and where our daily routine takes us. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us pray. Risen Lord, forgive us when we act like people living on the before side of Easter. Draw us to yourself and help us to experience your living presence in the breaking of the bread where life is lived and where our daily routine takes us. In your name and for your sake, we offer this prayer. Amen. We prepare ourselves to come to the Lord's table. Hear the invitation. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table 
with his disciples, he took bread and when he broke it and gave thank, gave it to them, then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Jesus invites all those who believe to partake of this feast. Our Savior invites us to come and share the feast that he has prepared. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Our communion hymn, and we'll stand for our communion hymn, is number 543. Here, O oh my Lord, I see thee face to face. And we're singing verses 1, 2, and 3 of this communion hymn. And after the hymn, please remain standing for to profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's found at number 539 in the Blue Book of Praise and it's up on the screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He ascended on the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life 
everlasting. You may be seated. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Beloved in the Lord, hear the words as they're recorded about the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are given to us by the Apostle Paul. I have received from the Lord what I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had blessed it and given thanks, he said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As the Lord Jesus Christ took these elements of bread and of wine to be set apart from all common uses to this holy use and mystery. And as Jesus offered thanks and praise, we come today with our prayers of thanksgiving. I invite you to join with me in the great prayer of thanksgiving. The great prayer of thanksgiving will be followed by the Lord's prayer. The responses for the great prayer of thanksgiving are on the screen. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our thanks, thanks and, and praise. Holy God, with joy we give thanks and praise on this day. Blessed are you, gracious God, for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. By his sacrifice, he, ha by his sacrifice, he has taken away the sin of the world. By his resurrection, he has won for us eternal life. We thank you that you have invited us to feast at this table as members of one household. Therefore, with apostles and prophets and that great crowd, cloud of witnesses who live far beyond all time and space, we lift up our hearts in joyful praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Gracious God, you created us in your own image, and you called us by the Holy Spirit to become one in Christ Jesus through baptism and through faith. Let your spirit be upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that the bread which we break may be to us a communion of the body of Christ, and the cup of blessing that we bless may be a communion 
of the blood of Christ. Therefore, in remembrance of the mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we take this bread and this cup and give you, you praise and thanksgiving as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine. That come, Holy Spirit, come and send your spirit upon us. Come into our midst. Come and revive, nourish, and Reveal yourself to us. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, forever and ever. And Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our, Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. According to the holy institution, command and example of our Lord Jesus Christ, and for a memorial of him, we do this, who on the night in which he was, he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had blessed it and given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body that is broken for you, this do, in remembrance of me. The gifts of God for the people of God, the body of Christ broken for you. After the same manner, Jesus took the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The gifts of God for the people of God, the blood of Christ shed for you.
The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us offer our prayers. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this meal and for our fellowship with you and with each other. We are appalled by the ruthless and the horrific acts of violence and brutality that the Ukrainian people are currently experiencing. We pray for those who live in fear, those who are suffering, and those who are suffering from lack of food and from other supplies. Those who have have lost homes and all their possessions, those who mourn the loss of loved ones. We pray that humanitarian aid will reach all who are in desperate need. We remember the frightened, grieving, and traumatized Ukrainians who have fled to other countries to seek refuge and safety. We pray for the families of all victims of violence and gun violence. Lord, deliver us from evil. We pray for a resolution to the current strike that is impacting the numerous commuters who travel through Union Station. We remember in prayer the faculty, the staff, and the students, and especially the families uh, of those at Royal Military College, though the four the four military officers, uh, officers who died this week. We pray for the Royal Military College and for all those, all their students and for the families who have lost their sons. We remember the southern part of Manitoba, the residents of the southern part of Manitoba. We pray for them as the flooding, uh, as a state of emergency has been declared and the floodwaters are rising there. We pray, Lord, that you would keep them safe and be with them during this time of danger. Oh God, be with frontline workers, though nurses and doctors, paramedics who have been stretched to the limit during the pandemic. Give them the strength and energy that they require for their healing work and keep them safe. 
loving God, we pray for any of this congregation who are ill at this time, those who are undergoing treatments. We remember Dr. Jackie's sister. We pray that you will support them with your presence and place your healing hand upon them through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. Our communion hymn is number 556. Now let us from this table rise. Please stand if you're in. may be seated. We continue in our worship as we present our tithes and our offerings. Freely we have received, freely let us give. Donations can be paid through our online partnership with CanadaHelps.org. Go to www.CanadaHelps.org slash en slash dn slash five six four nine five or donations can be mailed or delivered to saint andrew's presbyterian church 9860 keel street vaughan ontario l6a 3y4 for those who are here in the sanctuary there is a basket at the keel street exit that you can leave your donation and all your donations are received with thanks to assist us with our mission work and speaking of mission our mission moment today is uh, takes us back to Afghanistan, and uh, we've been going through this pandemic, and we forget sometimes about uh, that not everything is going well everywhere else. That in addition to the pandemic, so since the Taliban took Afghan control of Afghanistan in August 2021, an atmosphere of uncertainty has prevailed in the country. Large numbers of people fled to urban centers in hope of escaping the country, leaving their homes and livelihoods behind. As a result, many are struggling to make ends meet, and many more are facing severe hunger. Presbyterian World Service and Development is responding by providing emergency food assistance through an ecumenical collaboration with members of Canadian Food Grains Bank. Monthly cash donations will be supplied to some of the families experiencing the greatest need. As a result, around 2,550 families will be able to purchase food and pay for necessary items. This emergency food assistance is supported by Presbyterian World Service and Development in collaboration with Canadian Food Grains Bank. Uh, 
Reverend Brownlee during her prayers uh, mentioned about Ukraine and uh, and the uh, and the issue and the uh, the difficulties, the refugee crisis that's being created by uh, the war going on there. And again, this is these are type of of uh, events that Presbyterian World Service and Development uh, responds and to provide some much needed aid. So I do thank you all for being. If you wish to do donate. Again, if you're doing on the online, you can pull down the menu and select uh, for uh, Presbyterian World Service Development or Mission Work. And similarly, if you pay by envelope, you can fill in those boxes. And we do ask and look forward to, and thank you for all the donations that you do uh, put there. All those uh, in those dedicated boxes, those all go to those, uh, to those worthy causes. And next we have a special announcement. So just gonna pull that up on the screen so everybody can see. So edict for ordination of elder. Whereas Naomi Hussein, member of this church has been elected to the eldership by this congregation and has been approved by the session. Notice is hereby given that the session will proceed to ordain her to that office on the eighth day of May in the year 2022 at 1030 o'clock AM unless some valid objection has been given unto the moderator. And that was from 10 days from April the 26th, 2022. And so I do invite all of you, as many of you who can come out for this very special occasion to our regular church service next Sunday, as we will have that ordination as part of that service, unless again, assuming there are no valid objections. Thank you. So once again, thank you all for your support here at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. And let me turn it back to Reverend Brownlee. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask your blessing upon these offerings given as tokens of our time, our work and our loyalty to you. May your blessing be upon these gifts and upon each giver to our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our concluding hymn is number five, uh, sorry, 674. In the bulb, there is a flower. I invite you to stand as we sing this hymn. And I invite you to remain standing for the benediction that then will then fall.
morning to our pianist, Kevin, to our reader, Fab, and to our technical team, Alan and Dr. Jack. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you both now and always. Amen. Amen. And now, friends, on behalf of the session of St. Andrews, I do again remind you to come next week for that special ordination. And also, I wish you now to go in peace, but if you'd like to stay, we do have fellowship after the service. So I do wish you to stay for fellowship as well. So now, friends, let us sing a blessing to each other and let us go now in peace. God may be watching from above. You might find Jesus in unexpected places. Thank you all. <laughs>